Good evening, this is Kini News and I'm your host Prasad. Zaid Hamidi was in a hurry to hold GE15. After today, saying things have backfired would be an understatement. And the problems continue to mount for Zaid as even his coalition partners want him out. But the bigger issue is we still do not have a Prime Minister. And now the losers of G15 have somehow found themselves to be in the position of Kingmaker. Malaysians voted in G15 on Saturday, but it's Wednesday and Malaysia is still searching for a Prime Minister after the country found itself with a hung parliament. Today, BN and Perikata National met at the St. Regis Hotel in Kuala Lumpur. Those in attendance were Muhammad Hassan, Isma Sabri Yaakob, Arthur Joseph Kuruk and M. Saravanan from BN. PN's representatives were Muhyiddin Yassin, Abdul Hadi Awang, Ahmad Faisal Azumu, Radzi Jidin, Dominic Lau, Hamza Zainuddin and Ronald Kiandi. According to Malaysia Kini's B. Nanda Kumar, during the meeting, BN had explained to PN what the offer from Harapan was. And now BN wants a counter-offer in writing for them to evaluate tonight. This comes after the Yang Di Pertuan Agong decreed that BN's 30 MPs must take part in a unity government. BN Chairperson Ahmad Zaid Hamidi told Malaysia Kini that he and two other top coalition leaders received the decree when they were granted an audience at Istana Negara this morning. It may not be the end of the road for BN despite losing G15, but things don't look so good for Zahid within the coalition. MCA and MIC leaders have outed BN Chief Ahmad Zaid Hamidi, confirming that a letter to the AGO expressing BN support for Pakatan Harapan Chairperson Anwar Ibrahim is real. MIC President S.A. Vigne Svarin and MCA Secretary General Chong Sin Woon both said Zahid was confronted about the letter during last night's BN Supreme Council meeting. Earlier, BN Coms dismissed the letter, which has been circulating online, as fake. Chong said Zaid initially denied it, but later confirmed sending the letter. This prompted an uproar, as this was against BN's decision to stay in the opposition and not side with any coalition. MC is calling for Zaid to be replaced with BN Deputy Chief Mohamed Hassan. Although the letter mentioned 30 MPs, Malaysia Kini learned that only 28 signed an undertaking before GE15. The document gives Zahid the mandate to hold discussions on allying with other parties. The two who did not sign were Deputy President Mohamed Hassan and Samburong MP Hishamuddin Hussein. According to Harapan sources, together with the 28 MPs, the coalition has 116 seats, which is sufficient to form the government. There was also an attempt to have Zahid removed as BN chairperson during the coalition's Supreme Council meeting last night. However, this was stopped when Amno MPs who were waiting outside entered the meeting room. The Yang Di Pratuan Agung has a difficult task of appointing a Prime Minister with no coalition commanding a majority in Parliament. This is why His Majesty will be meeting other rulers to discuss the matter tomorrow. The race for Putra Jaya may not be resolved today. In a statement, the palace said the Yang Di Pratuan Agung will be meeting the Conference of Rulers tomorrow. This is so His Majesty can get the views of the other rulers before making a decision on the appointment of a Prime Minister. The King asked the public to remain patient, explaining that deciding the country's future must be done diligently. The monarch is reportedly pushing for a unity government a proposal that Perikatan National has rejected. Meanwhile, in a separate development, BN said a viral letter sent to the Yang Di Pertuan Agong that all 30 of the coalition MPs support Pakatan Harapan chairperson Anwar Ibrahim to be Prime Minister is fake. You better watch out, no not for Santa, but for roadblocks. But you don't have to worry about anything because PDRM says they're doing it for your safety. And expect the blocks to be around until further notice. Heavy police presence and roadblocks set up at strategic locations around the country is part of its efforts to prevent crimes. Police Chief Akril Sani Abdullah Sani said the around-the-clocks roadblocks will continue until further notice. He added that to ensure smooth traffic flow, police will not erect roadblocks during rush hours. He also urged the public to cooperate with police by obeying instructions when passing roadblocks. Police assure the public that they have nothing to worry about and people can carry out their daily activities as usual as the police would ensure that security is under control. 
The roadblocks have created a buzz on social media since yesterday, sparking speculation that the police are tightening security in anticipation of racial tension, as political parties are still scrambling to garner support to form a government. The top cop statement, however, did not mention any link of the heightened security to the recently concluded general election. Yesterday, the palace summoned all BNMPs. However, earlier today, only UMNO's top leaders were at Istana Negara to meet with the king. UMNO President Ahmad Zaid Hamidi and his deputy Muhammad Hassan have arrived at Istana Negara. They were seen entering the palace grounds in separate cars. It is understood that the BN Secretary General is riding with Zahid. There were no signs of other BNMPs so far. Yesterday, Istana Negara summoned the 30 BNMPs for an audience at 10.30am today. Security at Istana Negara is heavier than yesterday with the presence of more armed police personnel. Last night, several BN leaders told reporters after a meeting that the decision earlier to remain neutral and not support other coalitions still stands. MIC President S.A. Vigneswaran said there have been no changes with regard to their stance on Tuesday morning. Meanwhile, MIC Stapa MP-elect M. Saravanan and MCS Chong Sin Woon said they want to ask to postpone the meeting with the Yang Dipertuan Agong today. Gabungan Party Sarawak representatives have also been summoned to Istana Negara today. Now the BN needs to decide whose side they're on, they gave PN a chance to make their case at a meeting between the two coalitions this afternoon. Perikatan National and BN leaders are meeting at the St. Regis Hotel in Kuala Lumpur this afternoon. Sources close to UMNO said the BN side will be represented by Deputy Chairperson Mohamed Hassan, MCA President Wee Ka Siong, MIC Deputy President M. Saravan, and Parti Bersatu Rakyat Sabah Deputy President Arthur Joseph Kurup. A separate source told Malaysia Kini that the PN Chairperson is expected to be at St. Regis Hotel at 3pm today. The meeting follows an audience with BN's top two leaders with the Yang Dipertuan Agong this morning. BN has found itself at the centre of attention since Sunday after neither Pakatan Harapan nor PN had the required numbers to form a government. After being granted an audience by the Yang Dipertuan Agong this morning, Zai told Malaysia Kini that the monarch had decreed BN to take part in a unity government. At this point, it is unsure who will lead this unity government. As of last night, several BN Supreme Council members said the coalition's stand was to maintain neutrality. PAS has rubbished allegations that it paid voters for support in GE15. A party leader said they're not in a financial position to be handing out cash for votes. PAS election director Mohamed Sanusi Noor has denied that PAS had given money to voters during GE15. This is after allegations surfaced in viral videos and postings on social media. He said this is just a ploy by PAS rivals to smear the party. Sanusi added that the Islamist party does not have the funds to pay voters anyway. Speaking to Malaysia Kini, he also pointed out that paying voters is an election offence and it would be risky for PAS to do it in the open and have it recorded. One such video shows people waiting in front of a premise purported to be to collect payment from PAS for voting. A Twitter user, Laga Chawan, uploaded the video on November 20th, the day after polling day. In the replies, other social media users alleged the crowd was waiting for reimbursement promised by PAS for outstation waters. Voices complaining in the video had an East Coast accent. However, others note that this was a video of the disbursement of the I Belia cash aid for youths by the Terengganu government before polling day. It is likely to be the case instead of disbursement of cash to voters. The video was first uploaded on TikTok and has since gone viral on other platforms. However, the user who uploaded the video has deleted her TikTok account. Before I go, a special thanks to all our G15 contributors. Thank you for supporting us. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysakini.com. I'm Prasad. Thank you for watching.